So I know that many of you are like, you have this entrepreneur spirit and you want to own something. And I, I have that like desire as well, where I wanted that I want to own a piece of something. Like it's just something to be a black female business owner. And so um, you may not be black or female, but you still have the desire to own. And I know that it can be a deterrent for some of you when it comes to choosing the career path and more specifically becoming a PA because there is this idea that PAs cannot own their own practice or you always have to be dependent on uh, a physician. Um, and that is not the case. And so in today's video, I'm going to be talking about uh, can PAs own their own practice? Uh, I've already kind of sort of answered it for you, but I'm going to go a little bit more in depth um, onto what that kind of looks like uh, in today's video. So let's get into it right now. What's up you guys, it's Adana, welcome back to my channel. Okay, so I had the question posed to me about like, can you really own your own practice as a PA? And I've answered this before in a couple other videos, so if you just kind of want a more full comprehensive answer and like kind of how I've gone through it before, just type in like own in my search bar and then those other videos should pop up as well. But in today's video, I'm gonna be just kind of reiterating what I've already talked about before. So short answer is yes, yes, PAs can own their own practice. Um, now what that looks like depends on your state uh, and you, of course, but it's, it's a possibility. Okay, so let's just get that out of the way right here and now. Uh, now going beyond that, uh, practices that PAs own are typically small. Uh, they're typically like clinics or urgent care. So something that is like a little bit smaller and more manageable. Obviously, um, if you have the money and if you have the resources and the backing behind you, you can out like kind of outrig this as big as you would like. Um, depending on your state's rules and regulations. But really and truly, uh, the practices that I've seen have been kind of like single ran or they have one other partner with them and um, it's usually like a clinic concierge type of feel. Uh, so with that, you're able to kind of really hone in and be a part of the business. Now, growing a business is not easy. It's very, very difficult. Um, you, that's like your baby. So you have to like put time, money, effort into uh, making it and making it how you want it to be. And so for me, obviously, and for some other people, like that's time away from family. Um, and if you came into this profession because you want a little bit more flexibility in your time uh, and you don't necessarily want to start a business, then it's, it's this video is not for you, right? But for those of you that really do want to uh, own your own practice and, and have a piece of the healthcare pie, then you just really have to go to your state's website to see exactly what those regulations are. So APA, which is our governing body, also also has kind of like a, a linked page that has the various different states and where you can find the information on ownership and PA ownership and what that looks like, what that what structure that looks like for your particular state or the states that you're interested in living. So that would be a good first place to start when it comes to looking at how to go about owning your own practice. Now, there are many practices that are like family practice or urgent care that PAs own and then specialty practice like aesthetics, headache and concussion medicine, weight loss clinics. I've seen quite a few of all of those different structures when it comes to PA ownership. Obviously, you know, some of the more like specialties, like the surgical subspecialties, ownership in a practice like that is not necessarily something that a PA can do because um, if there needs to be like surgery done, you're not directing the surgery, right? However, depending on your state structure, if you're required to have a physician on board with you at your particular practice that you own, then maybe that's something that can be worked out where they're doing the surgeries and you're doing kind of all of like, you know, the intake or you guys are sharing that load, um, then you go in and you first assist uh, on the surgeries. 
I don't know. Uh, again, it all depends on your particular state and that dynamic that you have with your partner. So the, the structure, I would say, of PA ownership can be very complex as well as um, billing, right, when it comes to insurances. Because, you know, like some insurance companies will do any and everything not to pay you, right? Like that's kind of like that's what that's kind of like the idea that you have on insurance. Like, you know, they they're trying to provide you with this insurance if something goes wrong. But at the same time, it's like, yo, <laughs> I'm looking for any way not to have to spend this money. And so when it comes to like being a PA owner, that can be an obstacle that you can absolutely face. So that's something that you should be mindful of when you are thinking about the structure of your practice and how you want to go about starting this particular practice, um, you know, talk to your banks and make sure that they are well aware of all that a PA can do, that you are a provider, that you can prescribe medication, that you can do all of the things that you are trying to do in this particular clinic that you're going to be opening so that there's no issues there. And then again, you get with uh, taking specific insurances that will actually like pay you for the work that you've done. When I said that the structure can be complex, different states have different rules. And so there are some states where PAs can only be minority owners, right? So maybe like 10, 15 percent, 20 percent ownership, um, anything that where you're the minority, like 49 to 51 percent if it's just two partners. But then there are particular states that are extremely PA friendly where you can own like, you know, 90%, you know, 95%, like you can have majority ownership. So it really is a matter of what state you live in. Again, like I've been saying this and the structure of how they have their ownership with respect to PAs and physicians set up. And so short answer is yes, PAs can own their own business, their own practice. And I mean, business obviously can go into other things, um, you know, more like concierge type stuff. Like if you want to do infusions, um, you know, that's something that you can also do uh, and own like full and have full ownership of that uh, aspect of things. But it all depends on what kind of practice you want. And then at the same time, what the state that you're living in will allow, okay? And I think as we become more like notable, as there, as more advocacy is is done for the profession, uh, some of these various different like stringent things that like prevent full ownership or prevent full independence um, will definitely kind of like dissipate and maybe a couple of years down the line. But right now, here and now, if you want to own your own practice, it can be done. You just have to go and do the research, do your research, do your research on how it can be done. And like I said, the first place I would start is going to APA.org where you can actually um, go to the link that they have for your particular state on what ownership um, structures and rules look like for you and in your state. Okay. So hopefully this answered your question. Um, if you have any other questions for me, leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.